Welcome to Man360, I'm your host, Brian. Today on the program, I sit down with best-selling author and business coach, Dr. Henry Cloud. Dr. Cloud shared some important truths, not just about business, but the foundation of a man that leads to success in every area of life. In our conversation, I could see his heart to not just inform people with principles, but to help them get from where they are to where they need to be with God's help. In my hobby segment, I share about something I've collected most of my adult life and give some pointers to maybe start your own collection. Then we have a chat with musical artist and worship leader, Tyree Morris. He shared about all the ways he and his wife, Janine, minister in their community, and Ty answers one of the most important questions when it comes to reaching people who don't know Jesus. How do you do media that's not cheesy without compromising the message of the gospel? Ty and I had a fun conversation that I know you'll thoroughly enjoy. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360. Being a clinical psychologist with leadership consulting and media in his wheelhouse, Dr. Henry Cloud is a wealth of knowledge on many levels. I was privileged to be able to sit down with him and hear his thoughts about true success in life and business. As our conversation developed, I noticed something very interesting. We started talking about the employer-employee relationship, but all of Dr. Cloud's answers to my questions ended up being more about the character and integrity of a man as the foundation for everything in life and not just specifically business. Dr. Cloud shared about escaping the ruts or cycles of life and the importance of not being an island when wanting to grow from where you are to where you want to be personally and professionally. Here's my conversation with New York Times and Wall Street Journal best-selling author, Dr. Henry Cloud. So Dr. Cloud, it's good to meet you. Good to be here. Thank you for being on Man360. So I don't know, maybe people don't know who you are, so you kind of talk a little about your background and just share a little about yourself. Well, I'm a clinical psychologist. Um, but my first job was in a leadership consulting firm. So ever since I first started out, I've, I've worked with kind of high performers and, mm -hmm. and all sorts of leaders as well as the clinical side. Yeah. And being a person of faith, I try to help integrate that. But mainly I work with CEOs and businesses. Yeah. So in thinking of success, obviously in business, you know, everybody wants to be a success. Um, what is one thing that you could share to an employer or an employee about what, is, what would be to be successful in their job? Well, the first thing you got to do is be good at something, right? I mean, yeah. I, seriously, you have to say that because a lot of people, you know, they get all this attitude and all and believe this and, you know, but ultimately you got to bring something that has value. Yeah. So that's the first thing. I think the second thing is that <clears throat> people can sometimes bring a lot of competencies and abilities to do things, but they've got to be able to build alliances with other people because yeah, you take something good. you do well, and you build an alliance with something, somebody that does something else. Well, now you've got something bigger than either either one of you. And a lot of people kind of, they do their job, but they don't really work on their abilities hmm. to reach across the aisle and other parts of the building or out to regulators or investors. Yeah. And this alliance piece is huge. Yeah. That's the first two. But the third one is the big one. And I always say this to, to young people, um, you know, business schools, MBA programs, mm -hmm. seminaries, med schools, they churn out those first two every day. You know, yeah. somebody, people that are good at something, you know, they're, they're great networkers and alliance mm -hmm. builders. But the third thing is you've got to have the character hmm. to not screw it up. Yeah. Now, that's admittedly kind of negative, to not screw it up. Right. But also the character to pull it off. Yeah. And one of the things that I see a lot of times, even in leadership development, is we don't, we don't even know what that word means, character. Mm -hmm. We throw it around like we do, yeah. or the word integrity. We use that word like if somebody has integrity, you'll, you'll always hear this. Well, it means they're the same person in private as they are in public. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what the word means. Or they don't, you know, you can believe the numbers. They don't lie, cheat, or steal. My daughters at age five right. knew not to lie, <laughs> cheat, or steal. They weren't ready to lead right. a company. right. right? <laughs> the word integrity actually means whole. It means to be mm. integrated. That's right. We're sort of an integer is a whole number. Yeah. And if somebody has structural integrity, mm -hmm. like a building does or like an airplane does, yeah. then the whole thing is glued together in a way that can deliver the demands of reality. Yeah. So what I tell them is, look, you got to 
not only be competent, you got to build alliances, but you got to be working on your whole person. Yeah. Not, you know, way beyond not just lie, cheat, and steal. Right. And avoid that. Right. But you got to be able to emotionally regulate. You got to be able to listen. You got to be able to walk through fear and failure. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to cast vision and, and execute and be able to, to persevere. All these competencies in people's makeup, yeah. that's what makes the difference in people's success. Yeah. It's, it's who they are yeah. as people. It's interesting that I asked you specifically about an employer-employee, but really it's even more foundational than that if you're talking success in really any area of life and you know, knowing who you are in those specific pieces. And I know you had mentioned uh, Leadership University to me and you wanted to talk a little bit about you know, what yeah. does that mean to really maybe do some more development in those areas? Well, you know, I work with specific leaders and companies, but um, a lot of times they need to take the work that I'm doing with them and scale it to the whole company. Mm -hmm. So I developed an online uh, coaching program where I become your coach in some, some of these key areas of development that we need to be you know, in order to be successful. So you That's know, great. big companies take this, but individuals do. You can go to leadu, L-E-A-D, letter U, dot TV. Okay. And it's a, it's a really fun developmental path. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Well, and I had, was thinking about, of all the different, you know, seminars and leadership things and coaching pieces that you've done with CEOs and all these different people, what was one question that you've been asked more than any other uh, from, from men, and what did they, have they asked you if you could answer that one question, what would it be? Oh, it's easy to tell you the one question I've been asked more than any other question. That's, I mean, it's not even close. But it's not from men, it's from women. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the question is? They'll ask me, they'll point to him and go, Right. How do I fix him? <laughs> That's the question I get asked. So I, <laughs> wow. I guess it turns to yeah. men, how do we fix you guys? And right. Too, right. Right. So, um, <laughs> that is the one I get asked the most. But, you know, I'd, I'd answer a different way for, for men. You know, a lot of times what, what men don't really realize, mm -hmm. because we all have drive and, you know, we got aspirations and you got dopamine and testosterone and all this right. is like pushing you towards <laughs> the goal, right? Right. And that comes natural. But sometimes we're not, we're not hitting the mark. Hmm in some area where we know we can, hmm. the potential's there, I feel like I got the talent or the ability, but I keep failing, I keep kind of, or I stay in this rut or this cycle. Yeah. The biggest thing that I would say to men about that, look, if you could, you probably already would. Hmm. That's okay? really good. If you were able to pull this off, yep. you'd probably be pulling it off. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. Right. We all have gaps between our potential and our realization of that. Yeah. We all have hurts that hold us back, this and the other. Mm -hmm. But don't just stay there and continue to make New Year's resolutions saying, right. well, just because the calendar changed, you know, I'm going to be able to be something next year I couldn't pull off for the last 30 years, right? right. Just admit, I need some help. Yeah. That's all we got to do. Right. And then reach outside yourself, find a good school, find a good mentor, find a good coach, find a good group to join. Mm -hmm. You know, find somebody that can bring two things. They can bring the, the, the structured intelligence that yep. you need. There's something you don't know about how to get to wherever you're trying to get to. Yep. You know, instructions, manuals are good. Right. Somebody's got that. Right. And the other thing is they'll bring some energy. Hmm. So when you bring new intelligence and new energy to entropy, to something that's stuck, right. that's how we turn it around. So right. stop struggling on your own, guys. Get with some other guys mm -hmm. who can build something into you. That's how we get to the next level. It's interesting. We've done some other interviews for Man360, and almost to a person who we've interviewed had talked about that, about the importance of not just trying to do it yourself. Well, there's no such thing people. as self-help. Right. Right. It's an, it's an oxymoron. It really. is an oxymoron. It really is. <laughs> Especially for men. Well, if you think about it, okay, I'm the guy drowning, right? I'll get some self-help. Then I'm going to be the lifeguard. Well, wait a minute. I'm drowning. No, you're right. the lifeguard. Well, who's, <laughs> there's only one me. Right. So which one needs help and which one is the helper? Right. It, it, yeah. Right. Well, Dr. Cloud, in help for men, could you just pray for them real quick? I sure will. And uh, yeah. just share just whatever's on your heart to pray and encourage them in whatever way. Yeah. Yeah. Father, I lift up all the men that are listening and watching. 
I pray that first of all that you would knock on their heart's door mm -hmm. and that you would knock on a God with the true voice and they would hear your voice of the God that you are, that you're not there to condemn them, you're not there to spank yes, them. And as Jesus said, you didn't come to judge the world, you came to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. And God, every man listening, all of us, we have those parts of us that are we're just lost, we're just broken. Mm -hmm. And you're looking for those parts and you want to restore them. You want to heal them. So I pray that you would speak into their hearts and nudge them a little bit. And I pray for the men that they would be given that little spark and unction to open up. Yes, God. And just ask for help. Yep. I pray for the resources that they need, for the intelligence they need, for the support they need, and also for the courage that you would put it in them the courage that they need to just take that first step mm -hmm. and watch what you can do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Cloud, thank you for your help today to be being on Man360. And uh, I thank. thought, you know, Man360, I thought I'd been chosen as like the 360. <laughs> what no, are you going to have? More than that. I, I'm, not, I'm like the 187. Yeah, I was going to say 180 guy. <laughs> I mean, not 360. So again, thank you, Dr. Cloud. It's good to Appreciate be here. you. Holy crap, finding God's presence in your pain is more than just a book. It's a look inside a very painful time in my life where I almost lost my eye to a disease that doctors could not find the root cause. It drained us financially, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually. It's also about an awakening of a relationship with God and realizing that even though I didn't want to hold on to Him in my disease, that He was still holding on to me. It's a known fact that at some point in life, we will all go through a painful circumstance that can be difficult to navigate. Who we are and what we believe will be tested. I know that I didn't really understand who I was until I came to the end of myself, and this book is my story of what I went through and also what I learned in the process. HolyCrapBook.com has also been set up as a resource for you to continue the conversation after you read the book. You can also go there for more information about how to order the book. I'm excited about helping people see that they can find the holy in the crap of their lives. So today, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite hobbies, and that is collecting pens. So I've been collecting pens for probably about over 20 years, um, and there's not a lot of pens here you'd think for collecting pens for 20 years, but I'm very particular about pens that I collect. Um, a lot of them are based on either gifts that people will give me, some are based on just you know ones that I find that are that I enjoy and that I like, and um, you know there's probably three different classifications of pens. There's a fountain pen, a ballpoint pen, and a rollerball pen. Those are kind of the three main types of writing pens. And the difference probably between the ballpoint and the rollerball, which I love rollerball probably the most, but the main ones are the rollerball are more of like a smooth, they're more of like a water-based ink, or the ballpoint pen is more of like a thick oil-based ink. So it writes a little, little heavier, um, but I really like the, um, again, just that smooth writing, the, the easy ink out of the pen which is wonderful. So first of all, let me go over real quick about refills for your pens. So just in pens in general, um, there are some great, Office Depot is a wonderful place to get refills for pens. And especially if you buy a pen that's overseas or kind of unusual in some way, you can normally find some kind of refill even from another company that you can put into your pen, which is great. So I love these Pentel um, and there's other brands too that use this, but they have a, a plastic housing on them so you can cut this down basically to size and you can fit this inside of your pen. So you take the old, you know, the, what you re the refill, pull it out, measure it, and then you cut it down. So as long as the end and the tip on here is the same distance from the end of the pen, then you can use these as, they work great for refills, and you can get them in like a fine or a medium point as well. But I have also used Cross G2, um, this one here as well as a Schneider. And this is a really interesting size one that I just randomly found for another one of my pens that I didn't even think I was gonna be able to find a refill for it because it was a pen I bought overseas but it actually was great. So um, a few of the pens that I really enjoy collecting are Retro 51, that's a great pen, um, reasonably priced. Uh, they're about 50 to 75, maybe $80. And you know, one of my favorite ones of these pens is this called Mission to Mars. So this is the container that it comes in and it has a little plastic and I keep all of the, as a pen collector, I keep all of the, the, the um, pieces and parts that come with the pen basically. But it has the American flag on it, it has Mars on it, it's kind of fun. And these are all numbered as well. So this is a numbered, I think there was uh, 500 of these pens that they only did in this collection. 
So some of the other ones too are Acme pens, Cross are great. This is a pen my mom got me for Christmas, I think a couple, two or three years ago. It's a Stormtrooper pen, and for deployment of this pen, instead of pulling the cap or on upper bottom, you just pull it apart and actually the end of the pen pops out. So that's kind of cool. And I like this one just for the deployment, plus I'm a Star Wars kind of guy, so I love that too. My mom knew that, so she got me that for Christmas, so thank you, Mom. Um, the other pens we have here as well are ones that we just collected from just being overseas, um, you know, just to our travels and different things. We've been to the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, and this was uh, the pen I got up at one of the, um, at the observation deck up there, which is great. Um, we Actually, this one's from South Africa, and this isn't actually a pen, but it's a pen sleeve that you can put any kind of, you know, clicking pen into. And I just love the colors on here. And um, I, told, I saw Yolanda when we, when we saw it, and I was like, I really want to get that because it would remind me of my trip. So a lot of my pens too that I've gotten are just been reminders of just different times that we've been around the world and, and done some, some great fun things. So the last pen I want to show you real quick is my Grail pen. So probably it's my, my favorite pen I have. I don't use it as often as actually other pens, but I like this pen more, so I know it's kind of strange. If you are a collector and if you have a hobby in collecting something, you may have something like this in your collection. This is a Mont Blanc Meister stick. So I finally actually found this on eBay. It was about $99. Somebody was selling it and I'd just been watching, uh, watching to, to see the price go down. And normally these pens are like in the 200 a little bit more um, price range. And I'm like, that's kind of a lot of money to spend on a pen. I don't mind spending $100, but that was just a little bit more than I wanted to spend. So I actually finally got my Grail pen. And also because of, you know, I have a lot of different pens here for just for transporting sake and having them, you know, we have some different leather sleeves that you can get um, that are really nice. And again, I got all this stuff off of Amazon, which Amazon's a great place too, to be able to get some of these, these places to carry the pens. This is a sleeve that actually carries 12 pens. So mostly this is where all my pens will live. And I'm not a collector where I will buy a pen and then keep it and put it in a, in a drawer. I'll actually use it. So I have these, these are my daily use pens. And even though this pen I got for $100, this is a superhero pen from Acme. This pen was, uh, I spent $100 on it. It's worth probably $250 to $400 right now. And I use it every day. So some people are like, oh, it's worth too much money. But I'm like, why would I buy something and collect it and then not be able to use it and enjoy it? So, I mean, that's part of the, 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 part of the um, enjoyment for me in collecting is being able to utilize these things. But it's also just the thrill of the hunt too. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, little segment about collecting my favorite things to collect, my favorite hobby in pen collecting. And uh, hopefully it encouraged you to possibly kind of step outside and maybe think about something that you would want to collect and make it your hobby. Tyree Morris is one of the most fun people you'll ever meet. I love his energy, and when he's on stage at one of his shows or leading worship, he makes sure that everyone has a good time. Ty and I sat down to talk about his ministry and the ways he's not only bringing music to people's lives, but activating change in them through being the hands and feet of Jesus to the community around him. Ty is also one of the artist relation connections for Compassion International, and my wife and I have grown to love him and his family. Here's my conversation with musical artist and worship leader, Tyree Morris. Tyree, thank you for being on my program, Man360. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. Love you. Appreciate you. Appreciate your ministry. Uh, Yolanda, I love you and Janine and just all the great things that we see you guys doing around town and connecting with people. You're always traveling. I was, when I call your contact, you're in an airport, you're in Atlanta, you're in, you know, all these different places. But yes. can you share a little bit about your ministry, about what you do, and uh, kind of just talk about the music side of it, the family side, all the kind of the, the pieces and parts of your life right now? <clears throat> well, quite simple, man. Ty Morris, H-O-W. Uh, stands for Tyree Morris and Hearts of Worship. Um, you know, God has been like super, super dope to us. Uh, he has allowed us to yeah, be this Christian band and go into secular markets yeah. and uh, and do some real cool music mm -hmm. and, and compel people to come to Christ. But it's not just about the music, man, because, you know, what we have, man, we, Janine and I, we operate a homeless ministry where we go out and we physically touch people. We physically feed people. That's awesome. Uh, man, it's not much, but we want to say, hey, you know, God loves you and so do we. Yeah. So, you know, he, here's a sandwich here. And how can we pray for you? You know, here's water. Here, you know, here are socks. What can we do to help yeah. you out? And, and the music piece, you know, I mean, that's the easy part for me, man. That's yeah. the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I, I always tell you, too, I always said you always, you cherry picked like the best, the best of the best for your band and who you, who you have it as your singers and stuff. I just, it's, it's just so great. And Janine sings as well. Janine sings as well. With you. So uh, let's take a look at your, this music video that you released just this last year. 
and uh, just ha and let people enjoy this for a minute. Alive. Let's go. It's gonna be a good summer. No stressing. You thought you had me locked down, but he gave me kid a blessing. With him, doesn't matter what the season is, cause it's always your season. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Said I always got a reason to say it's a hot summer. Uh, yeah. Cause I've been here before, I want everyone to know. It's gonna be a summer. All your things work together for you. Girl. New shirt, new shoes, new soul, new shoes. Let's go. So Tyree, that was a great, amazing video. I love that. Uh, Thanks, the, man. So the, the the cinematography of it. The, you know, obviously, I love the music piece of it too. Um, but so, what do you see as a Christian artist, specifically with the music? What do you see as positive trends in Christian music? You know, for me and us growing up, I mean, Christian music was just not. It just wasn't there. Right. Or even right. if it was good music, it wasn't produced well. It wasn't right. So, right. what do you think are some of the positive trends that you see in Christian music right now? Well, I definitely think that. Uh, Unlike it used to be, maybe, maybe ten years ago, where mm -hmm. Christian music was twenty years behind. Uh, you know, it's. Not, I don't think it's no longer twenty years behind. Uh, I do believe that uh, a lot of our Christian artists today, uh, you know, have realized, hey, you know, we have to put, you know, what, uh, you know, what some of my friends, my mother would say, you got to put some weight on what you're mm. doing. And, and what That's they good. begin to do was put weight on as far as the production, uh, as far as the lights and the glimmer and, and all of that cool stuff. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about the direction that it's going, but we still have work to do. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, I think too, what I appreciate about you as well is there's definitely a crossover quality, I think, to what you do. I, you know, I see a lot of different relationships and, and things that you're building outside of just the Christian realm. And really to bring those people in, other people in, maybe they're not Christian. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, that you, that you can really minister to them in that way. But I know you and I have had many conversations about this. You know, we talked about TV programs and kind of, you know, stuff that we yeah. do here with Rocky Mountain CTN, maybe in the future doing something with us, is how do you keep the ministry of what God wants to do without being cheesy, I think, in music, and then also not compromising the gospel message? Well, man, I honestly believe that, you know, you really have to be yourself. You know, you, yeah. you really have to take the mask off and, and really be yourself. Just as you stated, man, we, we work with several, several artists that's outside of the Christian realm. I mean, that's even outside of the Christian faith altogether. Yeah. And sometimes, man, the only Bible that people will read is you. Yep. And, and how can we say hey, we love you, but then we're condemning you all at the same time. Right. So <laughs> right. we can't do it's that. It's like, knock that off, but I love you. But it's I like, love you. What? Right. Don't, don't, don't wear that hat. Take that out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. know. I think sometimes, too, what we do maybe is we try to take the place of the Holy Spirit of conviction. Yeah. And I think, you know, and then other, the flip of that, I think, is Christians can say, well, you're just loving people. You're, you're not telling them the truth. And it's like you said, you know, people are reading us. They're, you know, reading they're watching us. us we can decide when we read our Bible. We can decide, you know, when we and how we live our lives and praying before shows and those kind of, those kind of things that I really believe can pull people in. And I just really appreciate that you're authentic. And even that was one of the first things you and I talked about with music or doing some kind of a program. Yeah. You said, but man, it can't be cheesy. That was like, exactly. that was like it, almost it the second thing it out of the, be, the it First be. you said you love me. Then you said, well, but it can't be cheesy. You I may mean, want the, to flip that around. You have to say yeah, the obvious. Yeah, well, I was always yeah, saying I love yeah, you, yeah, right? I always I want to hug you when I see you, right? Because right? right. I, I love you so much. I got you, man. So um, how can people book you? 
How can they get uh, your music? What are kind of some current projects that you're working on as well? Man, you can book us. You can go to Cup of Life Productions uh, at gmail.com. Uh, we have great folks who who's always looking out to get us in front of as many people uh, as we can. Uh, the the cool thing about it right now, man, um, we're, we're about. 90 days out of booking so uh wow. if you want us you you gotta you, you better jump on it real quick that's so, awesome uh, it's a good thing it didn't used to be like that yeah i was like please book us you know what i'm saying so, like, but uh we'll do but, bar mitzvahs yeah, yeah, we'll do whatever we'll, we'll you want do us to do, do. <laughs> birthday party i'll be a club yeah. but uh <laughs> so uh so, yeah so you can do oh, that man. couple live productions at gmail we are on every every uh digital uh platform uh yep. spotify uh YouTube, Google Play, uh, Amazon, um, anything, anything yeah. that's out there. Yeah. Uh, so please check us out. Just Google me. You will, hey, like Shaq said, Google me. No, <laughs> you'll, and you'll see me. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love it. So can you pray for men that are maybe watching the program that maybe want to get into the music ministry in some way? Yeah. Um, and that God would open the right doors, maybe close the right doors that they're not supposed to walk that through and good. open the right ones too. Can you just pray for them right now? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, God, we just thank you, Lord God, for uh, for the man, Lord God. We're thankful, Lord, that, uh, you know, for those who, who have a desire to want to serve you and have a desire to want to serve others mm -hmm. through through the avenue of music, you know, whether it be hip hop, God, whether if it's uh, contemporary Christian gospel, whatever the genre uh, may be, Lord God, we pray, Father, that you first encourage them and let them know that they can actually do it. Yeah. Uh, because you have the time, Lord, we know that, you know, our biggest enemy is not the enemy, but our biggest enemy is our self and mm -hmm. self-doubt. So yeah. God, God, give that person the strength and the courage to say that they can do all things through you who gives them the strength. And we'll always be careful to magnify you and glorify you. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tyree, as usual. Yes, sir. Other people call you Ty. Ty. I call you Tyree like your mom did. <laughs> you know I love you. Yes, sir. And uh, thanks for, love, again, for being on the program. Man, thanks for having me. Let's do our 360 review of today's program. I learned a lot from my conversation with Dr. Cloud about the power of character and integrity in the life of a man. These are two foundational principles that if focused on and developed, can set a course for success in all areas of life. Go to man360.tv for more information about his online leadership university and a link to his website. I hope you enjoyed seeing my pen collection that I've amassed over the years. Hobbies can be a great way to relieve stress in life and it's fun to set goals for collecting things like pens. Hopefully you were inspired to start some kind of collection of your own. It was fun talking with Tyree Morris and hearing about his music ministry, but also the ways he is making a difference in the community and the importance of being authentic and real with people who don't know Jesus. As Ty mentioned, we need to realize that people will read our lives before they'll pick up a Bible, and we may be the only Jesus that some people will ever see. You can go to man360.tv and click on additional content for links to his ministry and to download his music. Man360 was created with the intention of helping men be complete in every way through Christ, spiritually, physically, and mentally. I hope you enjoyed our time today and learned something that you can apply to your own life. Tell us what you think of the program or give us ideas for future episodes on our website, Facebook, and Instagram. And we'll see you next week right here on Man360.